screwing around with the agenda a little bit uh, already. Larry has to go and make, uh, make some uh, appearances uh, in the North Country today. So without further ado, I wanted to uh, yield the floor and uh, give you Larry Sharp. I could talk about that I think that we should do or what we should achieve or how we can change and how I can use magic powers to make things happen, but I don't want to do that. What I want to talk about is long-term change, systemic issues that we have that we just don't fix and we need to fix. And I want to use an acronym, and the acronym is a cool acronym, it's BRO. Yes, B-R-O. Come on, bro. Yes, that's the acronym. And B stands for ballot access. This is one of our biggest problems, right? Is that we, we're not allowed to get on the ballot. You hear it all the time. We need a third party, we need a third party. I hear that all the time, right? We need a third party. If you guys would you know, put up some good candidates, and what I often tell them is, do you know that if you are a Democrat or Republican, your party literally sues to take people off the ballot every single year? Most people don't know that. When you tell people, your party, if you're a Republican or Democrat, your party goes out of its way to make sure you do not have choice. Out of, out of their way, they spend your money you donate to them to give to lawyers to sue people to throw them off the ballot. That actually happens. Is that good? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So they actually throw people off, they throw people off the ballot. This shocks people. But I would ask you a crazy question. People said, well, Larry, you have to have laws to keep people off the ballot. And I would say, well, what's the harm? This is what he mean. What's... <laughs> what are you trying to do? Oh, is that right? Should I move? Hold on. How about I... Look, look don't... Let... I'll move. See? I'm good. <laughs> We're good. Don't yeah. move to the left. So what, what, what I mean by this is, what's the harm? I'm going to give you a crazy uh, idea. What if all of a sudden the good people of Tulsa, Oklahoma decide, you know what, Larry Sharp should be our mayor. They decide that. So five people decide to put me on the ballot. Now in reality, I can't be on the ballot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I should not be on the ballot. So someone says, I think Larry should be it. They put my name on the ballot. Their, depart their, their department of elections screws up completely and lets me stay on the ballot. <laughs> right? So I'm actually on the ballot. Odds are I get five votes because five people probably know me in Tulsa just randomly, or just go to hell with the system, and whoever was gonna win, wins. There's no harm, right? What's the odds of me winning Tulsa, Oklahoma? But let's say crazy things happen. People of Tulsa actually decide, I don't know who Larry Sharp is, but I don't care, I'm voting for him, and I actually win the election. Let's say it actually happens. I'm sitting here in New York, and I win an election for mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma. What would happen? Well, I can't be the mayor, obviously, right? So it's a bogus election. If the majority of people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, actually picked me over the other two candidates, they didn't want those candidates, did they? No. So it still helps. In either, whether I win, lose, or whatever happens, if, that, if I actually should not be on the ballot and I, am, and I am on the ballot, there's no harm. So the idea of people saying we have to control the ballot because there's some harm is a lie. It's not true. It's made up. It doesn't matter. Somehow when California does their recall, there's like 100 people on the ballot, isn't it? Does the world end? No. Ballot access, the idea that it hurts anybody, is a lie. It is simply a way for duopoly to ensure that there's only two people and they gerrymander to make sure that parties pick voters and voters don't pick parties. That's what it's all about. Ballot access must change. That's why. Number two, R. Oh, you can clap. Go ahead. Yes, clap. Yay. Number two is the R, and the R is ranked choice voting. We have to change how we vote. Because if you change how you vote, what actually happens is people see what the actual impact is. For those of you who know what ranked choice voting is, is you simply say, say this to me, put on a ballot, you know, just saying for the sake of argument, a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, just saying. But say this, you're still straight on the ballot. You rank them the way you want to rank them. I really want this person. If this person doesn't win, I'll take this person. The other person, I don't want at all. I don't rank. Or I like all three of them, but I like this one the best, 
this one is second best, this one is third best. Which means you get to put down who you absolutely want without wasting your vote. It takes away the wasted vote concept completely. Say many of you like libertarian, but maybe you live in a blue district and, you, and you'd rather have a Democrat win over a Republican. We live in a red district, you'd rather have a Republican win over a Democrat. So you put the libertarian number one, and then your Democrat or Republican is number two. If a libertarian doesn't win, your vote goes to your Democrat or Republican. So there's no wasted vote. But what's the most important piece? You get to see who voted for the first time for libertarian. The third party impact becomes obvious in the first round. Versus you only get the end, and you get one or two percent, when maybe 30% might have voted for that third party if they knew their vote would be wasted. Does that make sense? It actually lets people see what's really important, and now we can respond, because here's one of the best parts about having a strong libertarian party. People say, Larry, you're never gonna have 51% of, of the entire country voting libertarian. That's not true. But anyway, they say that. So what I say is, great, I don't have to. I don't need 51%. Imagine right now in our Senate in D.C. if there were just three libertarians. Right now, just three. We would run the Senate. Literally, libertarians would run the Senate with three libertarians. Not 51 libertarians, not six libertarians, three. We'd run it. So imagine that. In our state Senate, if we had like four or five, we'd probably run the state Senate. Does that make sense? You don't need 51%. You need just enough. Why? Because we are the swing vote. We are the only people who connect. We're the only ones who connect. Last part is the O. I said bro, right? O, open primaries. Open primaries where people can vote who they want to vote for regardless of what the primary is. I live in New York City, as you know. New York City is six to one Democrat to Republican. It is so bad, literally, a note went out. This is a true story, a note went out, a letter went out to every voter that said, you need to register Democrat so you can have a say in the election. Some of you, may, anybody live in New York City get that note? You got that note? Yes, I got it too. Every New York City resident got that note. Just, just don't bother, register Democrat, or you will not have any say in politics in New York City. That was actually, that was actually sent out to every New Yorker. Yes, every New York City resident, yes. That's how bad it is. Why? No open primaries. If you have an open primary, you can still show your support by what party you're a member of, right? But then you can vote for whoever you want to vote for. Well, of course, the response is, but Larry, if you have open primaries, then the Democrats could sabotage the Republicans, the Republicans could sabotage the Democrats. It's possible, but then maybe you should have more of your people get out. Maybe you'll actually have a, a, a candidate that in a primary might not have to be radical left or radical right. They can actually be a centrist candidate that maybe your people want. But if nobody's gonna, going to sabotage them, then your people want radical left or radical right, which is okay. You should get who you want, right? I hope you all want radical libertarians, but it's fine, whatever. You'll take who you want to get. I'm okay. You're voting. You pick who you want to pick. If we had open primaries, you could see how people could pick who they want to pick in the primary and get an actual, at the end, get an actual campaign of people who are paying attention to the people. The, one of the most shocking things I found as I crossed this, the, the state in 2018 and met many, many elected officials. And I think Juan will probably uh, not be surprised when I say this. How many elected officials actively don't care about their constituents? Did you find that one? Oh, yeah. Yes, you did. Yes. If you actually meet people, how many actively don't care about us at all? In fact, some actively hate us. And I'm serious. They actively hate us because we ask them questions, because we bother them, and we saw that recently, some of you might notice that we saw that recently, the school boards, yeah. right? We've seen them school boards. For so long, we have not pushed any of our elected officials, so they've become basically minor kings and queens, and now all of a sudden we show up and they go, why in the world are you in my kingdom? <laughs> how dare the peasants revolt? That's how they feel. But we've allowed them to be that way for literally decades. So now when we show up, they go, oh, these peasants in my kingdom. Don't you know this is my castle? That's how they get. Well, you know what? That's our fault. We've allowed them to be monarchs for decades. We've trained them to communicate with us this way. So they do. We have to change that. 
And we can by having open primaries and by having ranked choice voting. The ranked choice voting piece adds something else. It means you can't, by default, just be negative. We saw that in New York City. Because you don't know, New York City actually has ranked choice voting. It has it only for the primary. So that, so that Democrats can make sure they get who they want. So Democrats get choice, no one else does. I'm not joking, that's actually true in New York City. Democrats get their own choice, no one else does. That's how they did it. Because what winds up happening is, think about this. If you can vote for me, or you can vote for her, or you can vote for him, three people, if I just say, they're evil, and that's all I do, then all their people hate me, and I go on nobody's second choice. But they're one and two. One of them will win. I'll lose. Negative campaigning becomes not as valuable. In fact, the reverse is true. I want to say, vote for me. If you don't vote for me, vote for her. And I want her to go, if you don't vote for me, vote for Larry. Now we box him out. Positive campaigning boxes out negative campaigning in ranked choice voting. Add open primaries, add more ballot access, and what we'll have is an actual vibrant democracy to where voters can actually pick their, the people they want versus right now, parties pick their voters. That's how it happens now. We have no choice and we have no power. That's why so many of us check out. So I spent a lot of time talking trash about how cool I am because I am pretty cool. <laughs> However, the system's more important. The system's bigger so that more people can step up and make things happen. Guys, thank you so much for today. I appreciate it. I have a lot of Good to see you all. Thank you. Sire, the peasants are revolting. You bet they stink on ice.